Hey, it's Joseph here. I am back to my studio and I wanted to cover a hardware that I use for architectural purposes. So the product that is being questioned is 3D Mouse. More specifically, this one is Space Mouse wireless version. And I have featured this mouse a few times on my channel. So I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to follow if you are interested in. And I mainly use this for navigation and presentation purposes. However, there is a lot of use case scenarios that may fit you really well. So I wanted to kind of cover those as well and also 3d connection which is the company for making these 3d mouse and they have sent over another one to kind of feature on this channel so this video is not sponsored however they have provided this product of this specific unit whilst I have paid my own money for this one so I just kind of wanted to get that off our backs this one when it came in it came in a box so let me just kind of show you so on this box it will say space mouse compact so which is sort of the wire version of it and inside it looks like so and you can just kind of take that cover away and there will be the mouse situated in here and it comes with this sort of cover and I believe there wasn't anything additional so yeah um, that's pretty much it and you have this sort of information shown on the box and nice touch, simple, gets the job done and you can download the drivers online anyways. So I have two of these devices available. This one is wireless, this one is just wire version. To be specific, this one's name is Space Mouse Wireless, whilst this is Space Mouse Compact. Whilst it does say compact, I don't see much difference in sort of physical size of it. This one is sort of round design whereas this one has a more square with the round edge kind of designs. And this one has micro USB connector on it, whilst the other one is just straightly leading out to USB-A port, so you can just connect to your computer that way. And the wireless version actually came up with a little pouch where I kind of carry around with. The dongle was included, so I just kind of put this mouse in there and put the dongle in there and just kind of carry it around. And the battery seemed to last a very long time. I've never had a problem with it. And the spec sheet kind of states that it can be up to one Month. Often I just kind of leave it connected because it just continually powers on if you have it charging. I have a micro USB cable that's just connected onto power or my computer and then it just continually charges. There's an LED indicator as well as when I connect it, a blue LED will come on on the mouse itself. And this feels quite delicate because up top here is very sensitive sort of axial control. Some people do pick it up from the top. I don't really advise doing so. I don't feel good about it. So I usually try to pick it up from the base and it has quite a hefty weight to it. Feels like it's been filled up with some sort of heavy metal in there so that when I kind of use a mouse to move around, it's not gonna slide around. It has a rubber feet so that it prevents it being slid around and this one as well. So you can kind of see the rubber feet on it. So each of the mouse that I have have two buttons on them. So one is on the left side and one is on the right side and they just kind of click and operates either macro or the radio radio menu that they have and you can dedicate eight axes for you to access those menus. I don't particularly use them but I do assign macros to these buttons depending on the software that I'm using. And for SketchUp for example I use the button on the right, my right, um, to be the next scene and the left to be the previous scene so I can just toggle back and forth between the scenes quickly and hence why that I use this for presentation purposes. So with that let me just kind of go over use case scenarios. So in my own workflow, I primarily use this mouse when I'm trying to navigate in presentation. It is more valuable for me to have a keyboard and a mouse where I can just navigate with and I am quite savvy enough to kind of navigate around with keyboard and mouse just fine. And 3D mouse is actually advised to be used on the left side. So my right hand will be mouse and the keyboard in the center and the space mouse to be left. And at that point, I don't have another hand to operate my keyboard. And 
and the back and forth motion of going from 3D mouse to keyboard, trying to use short keys, actually prevents me being efficient. So I don't tend to use this whilst modeling purposes. However, I've seen some people do and they get along just fine. Uh, for example, Aaron from SketchUp team always uses the 3D mouse when he's live modeling I've seen and that is much fancier version it has like LED screen and many more button that is on the mouse itself and for me especially because I own a surface device which is right here and because I occasionally draw on Photoshop this becomes a very good combination so I can draw with my pen and then I can erase at the same time I can zoom and pan around easily using the dial itself and these two buttons are assigned as redo and undo so I can quickly do that. There is sort of the three finger swipe and all but it misses those gestures often. Having a physical button is very very helpful and you can also use for browsing or PDF viewing so that you can zoom and pan around your document as well. That works really well. And the most useful application for the Space Mouse, at least for me, is for Revit, SketchUp, and Enscape, which is the rendering software for SketchUp and Revit. And let me just kind of go into those software so I can kind of showcase what it does really, really well for me. I can simply go to 3D View, and then inside here, you'll see that it has been recognized as 3D Mouse. And right now, I am in the object mode. It is not really changeable inside of regular 3D view and I can either go up and down through the sideways where I can start to zoom in and out and then turn it around which is sort of the pivot mode and basically it will allow you to do and everything that you will do with this view cube so it is very very intuitive and also if you go to any of the perspective 3ds perhaps I can look at this section perspective you can select from the object mode to walk or fly mode I prefer fly mode so if I go to fly mode I can just kind of showcase everything like so and at least for the duration of navigation it'll just kind of keep up with it and as I park it and it is going to cast shadow and put some textures onto the scene and you can immediately have sort of the spatial experience as you walk through the building and this experience becomes really crucial whenever you're doing a presentation for your clients so that they can easily understand the space whereas if you were to look at it in the plan it's kind of difficult to understand everything in plan especially if you don't understand architectural drawing so well and it is not as clunky as how you would navigate through your keyboard and a mouse and simply in Revit it's really difficult to navigate around with keyboard and a mouse and then I can at least kind of look around but that becomes kind of clunky as well because you can kind of see all the jitteriness and I can't really freely navigate around whilst if I were to use my 3D mouse I can do that much easier and the transition is a lot smoother and that really becomes the selling point of this product here and when it becomes SketchUp so I can do the smooth transition around the space and I'll be orbiting around the central zone and I can really showcase the spatial experience by just kind of zooming in and out very slowly because if I were to try and use my mouse to navigate it just becomes clunky as you just kind of jump through the scene whereas if I were to use my space mouse I can just zoom out gracefully. If I were to use different navigation mode, which is camera mode, I use camera mode most of the time so I can freely swim around my model and I can just accurately swim inside of my model however I would like to. I can easily follow up spiral staircases and navigate through the spaces a lot easier and this allows me to showcase the model to my client and then just perhaps have a smooth motion. I often keep my finger on the mouse itself so that you have this sort of slow motion that goes throughout the scene so that they gain sort of the spatial awareness and really experience my architectural design that I'm suggesting to my client or my coworkers. And going back to Revit itself, let me go to Enscape and showcase that as well. And if I use Enscape to navigate around Revit, I can just kind of view it this way. And there's no notion of shadows being away from the scene whilst I am navigating around. And I can do much smoother transition. I can kind of speed up things if I need to. 
and then I can go slower if I need to so I just kind of show the motion a lot more gracefully and then I can go over to this side where I can show different area of the house if I need to and then show them how the shadow is going to be affecting the scene by just changing the shadow inside of Enscape. So I can make all of these discussions while whilst using the space mouse and just kind of talk about the scene and the transition is a lot smoother. Whereas if I were to use my keyboard and a mouse even, um, the experience becomes kind of clunky as I will be turning around like this, try and get to that specific door. And I'll be just kind of swinging left and right to land that. Whereas if I were to use space mouse, it is a lot easier to kind of do a smooth transition. I'm using space mouse at the moment and just navigating through tight spaces become a lot easier and showcasing your design through this navigation system becomes a lot easier. I can back off and then just turn around and perhaps go to the staircase here and walk up and navigating through the space becomes a whole lot easier using Space Mouse. And this becomes very, very effective use case scenario for Space Mouse. And that is the reason why I keep this one in my bag whenever I'm planning on 3D presentation using Enscape or SketchUp or Revit. So hopefully this dedicated review of Space Mouse or 3D Mouse if you call it was helpful for you. And if you indeed like this content, please like and subscribe to my channel for contents like this. And thank you so much for watching my videos. I will see you next time. Bye.